All right, here's an intro video for a pretty awesome property. This is a 10 acre tract uh, with about 248 feet of direct frontage on the Niangua River, a few miles uh, north of Bennett Springs State Park. So this is in, in the actual trout fishing section of the Niangua River. You can fish for rainbow trout and brown trout right from your property, uh, which, is, which is pretty unbelievable. Uh, even without the trout fishing, this is a very popular section of river, the Niangua, um, for floating, for camping, uh, and just directly across the river from this property, you've got the Barclay Conservation Area, which is over 400 acres uh, of land that's open for public use, uh, has a, a great river access point. I think there's some trails and stuff you can use. Also, uh, I believe it's open for hunting as well. So uh, this area is full of deer and turkey, so you'll, you'll very likely see those on the property. Uh, and if you need more land to hunt, just uh, go to the Barclay Conservation Area right there. So to jump in here, here's the property. It's outlined in red. On the uh, northeast side, it borders Marigold Drive for about 350 feet. It goes southwest and then borders the Niagara River for about 248 feet along its entire south southwest side. Great, great section of river. Let's zoom out a little bit here to, to start with. Okay, so we're using the MapRite program, which is great. When you go to, to view the property or, or whatnot, if you get the free MapRite app, search for MapRite, all one word, and then uh, let us know you've got that, and we can email you the link for this interactive map. Actually, we'll, we'll kind of order it through MapRite, and I think you'll get an email from MapRite, uh, but you have to open that email on uh, whatever device has the app, click on the link. Within the link, it'll say, do you want to open this within your app, to which you'll say yes, and then this map will pop up, and there'll be a little colored dot to indicate right where you are. It works out the GPS on your phone. So it's a great way to drive to the property and it's a really great way to uh, to kind of tell where you are when you're out there. So really handy to have. But at a minimum, please print the maps and directions uh, because certainly it can be tricky the first time you head out there. Okay, so we've got Marigold Drive here, which is a gravel road. Uh, the property does uh, have, like I said here, about 350 feet of direct frontage on Marigold. Uh, there's not currently an approach, so you're welcome to install one if you want to, um, but you don't have to because you can still access the property just by going north a few hundred yards on Marigold. Uh, if you follow the little hand here, take a left through the gate and then follow that road. It goes down the hill to the, the bottom area. Take a left and this dotted line, by the way, is the power line. Um, the yellow lines are the road easements. And then there's a road that goes right to the southwest um, corner of the property. In fact, basically right to the river and then overlooks the river. And if you backtrack a little bit, there's a secondary road, which you can take, and that crosses over the western part of the property. Um, so even without the approach off Marigold, you've got, you've got access to a couple different areas of the property. Oop. Yep, so those road easements are in place. Um, power easement runs adjacent to the road. There is setbacks from these roadways uh, to allow for road maintenance and for power to be run in the future. Um, there is also a road easement on the eastern portion of the property adjacent to Marigold Drive. So this yellow line you see here um, is a, another road easement, uh, which will probably be a, a cleared road at some point in the future. And that's going to give you another option if you don't want to do an approach off of Marigold um, to start either at this south side or up here on the north side and take the little trail to the east part of the property. As far as the topography, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's the highest toward the east side. Uh, it kind of rises up uh, for the most part off of Marigold, although this does appear fairly level right here. We'll have to check out the ground video. I don't recall if it is, but uh, it, it looks like a portion of it is. It's going to be, like I said, the highest here. This is almost a, a knoll, uh, so you may have a, a nice overlook there if you were to clear out some of the timber. Slopes down as you move southwesterly toward the river. You've got a level area here as you get close to the water. And then actually this western portion, this is a little valley. And when we were out there, um, it was actually really cool. Uh, there, there's a little creek that was running through there with a, a natural uh, rock waterfall, which was really pretty, and it flowed right into the Niagara River. Uh, also on this extreme western side, you've got kind of a flat area that then overlooks the river, which is really cool. I think what we'll do is... Uh, I do want to zoom in, but first I want to zoom way out and show you 
exactly where this is in relation to uh, uh, the nearby cities and towns and whatnot. Okay, so if you look toward the uh, lower right portion, that's Lebanon, Missouri. From Lebanon, which is on I-44, uh, you can go southwest to Springfield, which is about 45 minutes. You can go northeast up to St. Louis, which is probably about two hours from Lebanon, roughly. Um, but to get to the property, just take Highway 64 to the west. And I'll, I'll tell you the most direct way to get here, although there are ways that are a little quicker if you take the back roads. But the most direct way, and probably the way you want to go on your first visit, is take 64 all the way to the west. It's about 10 or 12 miles. You'll get to Bennett Springs State Park. Uh, go down a little hill, and just before you cross the river, just before you cross the Niagara River, you're going to go right onto Marigold Drive. And Marigold Drive is what eventually does border the property. So you, you follow that all the way up to the north. There's a few twists and turns, but um, basically you're going to be veering to the left to stay on Marigold. And then that's what directly borders the property up there. Um, Bennett Springs is where the fish hatchery is, where they raise the, the rainbow trout and the brown trout, and they stock that section of the river. So the trout fishing section is from, the, uh, from Bennett Springs, just past the property to the Prosperine Prosperine or Prosperine access area. So that's the white ribbon trout fishing section. It's very limited, um, especially when you consider some of the other factors, like some of it is conservation land, some of it is extremely steep bluff that isn't really usable. Uh, it's, it's just a very, very limited area uh, where you can physically get to the water and fish for trout. And this has, has property right on there, which is awesome. Okay, let's zoom back in. Uh, that's, the, that's another conservation area up there to the upper left. I don't know too much about the lead mine conservation area. Okay. So we're going to go back to the Google map. Extremely popular section of river. Uh, just down river, you've got uh, several campgrounds, One-Eyed Willies, Maggard Campground, Ho-Hum Canoe. Uh, if you continue following Marigold down, you'll get to Ho-Hum Campground right there. Um, so, I mean, you, in the summertime, especially on the weekends, you're going to have quite a few uh, floaters and rafters coming down because it's a popular section of river. Um, but, I mean, the bonus is if you're looking for privacy, you do have this conservation area directly across from you. So not only is that going to remain peaceful, but you're not going to have people building over there. You're going to have access to that, which is great. Uh, a lot of spots where you can put in, I mean, the, the big float would be to, to put in your canoe or kayak at Bennett Springs and float all the way down here, which would be uh, probably the better part of, of the day. Uh, I like to do little mini floats, so I would probably uh, put in right here at the conservation area at the bottom of the screen. There's an easy access point and do it just like the 30-minute uh, the float down to the property and get out on the property. That would be my preferred float. And then spend the rest of the day hanging out on the property and splashing around in the river. Okay, so these tracks out here were logged within about the last one to two years. Um, certainly not clear cut, but they they were uh, logged the the larger commercial uh, hardwood timber. So a lot of timber left, but uh, I mean you'll see that the loggers really didn't do much cleanup. Uh, I think this map shows it pretty well. The logging was probably the um, the heaviest toward the middle, and then here on this east part, there's actually quite a bit of mature timber left. And as you get more toward the west part, down by the river, you'll, you'll find quite a bit as well. Um, so you've got some open areas. You've got a few little trails running through there. You've got many, many options for building sites and camping sites. I wonder how close we can get. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, here you can see toward the top of the screen, that's a trail. Uh, so other than these, these yellow trails, uh, the other trails are, are just... Um, private existing trails. No one, no one can use those to cross your properties, your property. Just a stellar property. I mean, check out, we got a drone video. We, we're going to have a ground video as well posted on the listing page. Uh, this stuff on the Niagara River, I mean, we, we knew when we got it that the response would be fantastic, but it's been even more fantastic than, than we dreamed. I mean, we're hearing from everybody that wow, I've been looking for acreage in this area for 10 years and there's never been acreage available. And we kind of said, yeah, we know, we've been looking for it too. So <laughs> we're pretty excited to, to have these. So uh, for a place to camp, for a place to hunt, for an investment, uh, there are property covenants in place uh, that'll keep your 
uh, keep this area looking nice. Um, you can check out the website for details on those. We don't think they're very severe at all. Um, so it's just designed to, to keep the area looking good and protect your investment. Uh, so instantacres.com is where you need to go to check this out to get more info, to get uh, the drone video, the ground video, the maps, all that good stuff. Uh, if it's available, then you'll see, if this property is available, then you'll see it on, on instantacres.com. We have a very limited number of these tracts. Um, so if you're interested, um, just let us know. We would love to talk to you about, about this property or any available property instantacres.com.